So this film is going to be released in multiple formats. One of the major formats is 3D IMAX and other non-IMAX digital cinema 3D. And filming in 3D is full of challenges, although the equipment has gotten a lot better than it used to be and more nimble and more easier to use than it used to be. So we have a stereographer on set, Ralston Humble, who is really, every time we set up a shot, there's this extra layer of checking the stereo and reframing the shot and framing things in or out of the shot to make the stereo most effective. Copy that. We're going to be filming this morning with what's known as a beam splitter rig. In 3D, we need to film on the left side and on the right side. So in the real world, we look at the world in stereo. We don't look at a world that is flat. So the difference between our left eye view and our right eye view is what's known as stereopsis. And we use the difference to give us depth cues. And that's what gives us a stereo effect. So we need two views of the world. So we're using two separate cameras. This is one camera, and then we have another camera over here. These are normal 2D type cameras. But what makes this rig very special is this. It's a mirror. This camera films through the mirror, whilst this camera films a reflection of the mirror. And that's what gives us the two images in front of each other. All we have to do is project those two images to you in the cinema, but how does the right image get to your eyes? That's where the 3D glasses come on. The left set of glasses only allows the light from the left camera to reach the brain through the left eye, whilst the right glass only allows the right image. And then in your brain, it fuses the two images together and then you enjoy beautiful IMAX Stereo 3D. As soon as we power up, we'll calibrate the lenses first, make sure that the zooms are all matched. Ideally, you want it to be perfectly aligned while you're shooting so that post-production doesn't have whole gamuts of stuff to fix. Ralston's on that every day, he's watching that constantly from the tent. Every time we move location, we have to move the digital village. Now the village gives us access to both cameras so we can see inside the tent in real stereo 3D. This is really important because it gives the director a sense of the depth of the shot. So he's not looking at a shot blind, he's able to put on his glasses and see the 3D image. The only thing I'm going to check is this could be too close foreground for 3D, so I want to just know. I like this stuff here, but I'll check with Ralston as soon as he's, he's up and running. Filming in 3D is a third dimension, basically, in your brain, in the way that the technology works, in the speed that decisions need to be made, and in a way, the speed with which the audience takes up the image. And that manifests itself as extra work on set. Ralston, whose job is to make the 3D work, will feed back to the DOP Jerry and to me and to anybody who can influence the quality of the 3D. He will feed back what's good and what's bad. You saw that hanging vine in front here. That should go. Yeah, we're losing the vine. Jerry, that vine needs to go. Yeah, the one between you and the post. Got it. Well, this is always the challenge of working with 3D in the jungle because you've always got something really close to frame and then everything away from the frame. So what we're trying to do here is just get a balance to make the viewer feel like they're inside the jungle, but at the same time, the lens and the stereo to be correct. And of course in 3D, if something is in your face, it's, it's annoying, you know, and unless it's done intentionally to make a point, it's irritating. From a storytelling point of view though, it's really interesting because when you want a character to feel either lost or caught up in a big environment, you suddenly have the extra dimension to play with. You can give the audience that same sense of being in a big expanse. For example, this is coming over the audience here. So the idea is that they feel like they're really inside the scene. And in IMAX, it's going to be incredible because you'll just get the scale of it like you will not experience in any other medium. Only 60 different species in all of England, and I've caught twice that already. One of the opportunities that the film has offered is, is formatting, it's framing for three formats. So we've got the dome, which is enormous, and it means I have to be aware of things that are actually behind me. So I can't light from above because there's no room. I've got IMAX, which is enormous, the other way. And then we have our regular 16.9 as well. We're finding the sweet spot for the IMAX to combine that with the dome as well, we have to find sort of 
imagery that works for all the formats. Fortunately, in this sort of jungle with so many tall trees, we've been really lucky. 3D is a pain, but when you get the chance to use it for the storytelling, it's, it's a pleasure.